It wasn't until 1921, until the Reserve Bank was created, that South Africa got its first currency. The Rand would only come in 1961 when South Africa left the Commonwealth. In 21, they would have made South African pounds, and that would have had this fake Van Riebeck on it or not. Correct. Was he always on the banknotes? Initially, if you look at the first banknotes that the Reserve Bank produced, you had the ship in that. But the Dormodaris and those, yes. The Dormodaris. Yeah. But it's interesting if you look at that, one of the things they wanted to bring onto the notes was the Nguni cattle and the Springbuck. But they then moved away from that, bringing a person, Jan van Riebeck, onto the note. And the primary reason for that, it was very much easier to counterfeit a note that had an animal on it, and therefore having to bring a face onto the banknote. Which explains why banknotes around the world generally all got faces on them. Correct. And thanks to technology, a lot more security features are now built into, into the notes. Well, what's the oldest relic you have in this museum that was a form of exchange? Probably our, our Roman coins. You know, they would, would, would be the earliest that we've really got. And then, of course, some of the bartering and trade items. But I would really probably look at the Roman coins and probably the most identifiable in that sense. Why do you go back that far in this museum, an African museum of currency, to go back to Roman times? They didn't come this far south as far as I know, the Romans. Not at all, but I think you need to, you, you, when viewing history, you have to view it in the bigger context of things. You can't just look at history in terms of just South Africa or just Africa. We need to look at it in the sense to see how money actually evolved. If you look at the Roman, and it's very much where you look at the Roman coins that were very much used in the sense of depicting who their Caesars and the emperors were on the coin. At the same time, you've got Chinese money that came out at the same time, both ending up with round coins. The Chinese money, very much um, based on the philosophy that um, the, the universe was round, and if you look in the center of the coin, there's a square hole that's flat, believing that the world was flat and square. So also, it's, it's interesting in that sense to show how money has evolved in the influence of ideologies, cultures, through, through times. You're worrying me, you've got something in your hand, it looks like one of those tin things where you open the lid and a snake pops out in your face. And so I'm going to ask you to open it because I don't trust myself at all. What is that? One of the, besides showing the history of money in terms of the Absa Money Museum, it's also important, you know, we have a large number of learner, learner groups that come through your school groups, and to also show them other aspects. And what is that thing? Here's something quite unique in the sense. It looks a bit like I don't know, a World War II decoding machine or something like that. What is it? Known as a if I turn it, will, it, you, will you, it explode? Not at all. It's known as a coffee grind or, or a hand grenade. <laughs> Now you tell me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're almost right. You know, it was designed just after World War II by a gentleman, Kurt Stach, and it's the first portable calculator. So what are its origins? I mean, uh, and it's the Kurta. It's called the Kurta. Kurta, Kurta. I mean, so just after World War II. So it was developed during World War II? It was II? developed during World War II. Um, Kurt, Kurt Stach, he has, had been captured in the concentration camps and really... He was kept alive on condition that he would develop what you now have. And thanks this to can do calculations, like do a, a very modern abacus, and predates electronic calculators as we know them. Very, and it was used until uh, the mid-1990s in terms of rally cars. I mean, you could, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could drop that on the floor. Like and this. It, correct. Okay. And in terms, because it was very durable, and, and, I mean, if I knew how to operate it, I would be able to do uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division even on this thing. Correct. I mean, and, this, and so these sorts of devices, the hand grenade, I'm going to hand it over to you now that I've wound it up. Thanks, Bruce. Because I don't want to drop it. Um, but it's, so it's about the tools of money. It's about the money. You've got notes that are printed on fabric. You've got coins in here. There's a whole history. I mean, there's also lovely exhibitions for anybody who uh, is a fan of old school banking when you used to go to a counter and you could actually hear the person on the other side because there was no glass. Um, the trust bank shelves and all of that sort of, it's a real retro experience of what money is all about. But. Well, you know, I mean, I think through, through the Absa Money Museum, my aim really is to keep educating people. It's one way of preserving our heritage in terms of South Africa's rich um, economic heritage and numismatic heritage, but, and keep reminding people how the world is evolving around us and 
today it's evolving so much quicker. At the bottom of the museum, we've got a technology section with the old original typewriters and things, things like that. And it's to, for the kids that come through to say, there was a world before Facebook and Twitter <laughs> and, you know, um, cell phones, you know, that actually now governs our worlds today. And, and it wasn't that so far back, if you think about it. Are you open to the public? If I just moved in off the street, if I was wandering past from the Rand Club one day, um, and I came, I don't know if that's still open, um, and, I just, <laughs> and I knocked on the door, would I be allowed in? More than welcome. We open Mondays to Fridays, um, 8 till 4. For school groups or so, we cater for them. We saw um, them coming in behind. They're very well behaved, these kids, by the way. And we just said uh, our only request with schools is really just to please make yeah. a booking with us. It's an amazing facility, it's an amazing resource, and it's an amazing place to come and spend a couple of hours. It really is for you to get a grasp of the sense of money. Neil Ferguson really drew it out for us nicely in the first part of the show this evening. But you could also come here and actually get to see the sorts of money that the Romans and the Chinese used thousands of years ago. Paul Bayless, thank you very much indeed. Curator at the APSA Money Museum in downtown Johannesburg. That's it from Taking Stock for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it. Enriching, that's a good word, hey? Enriching. Good, yes. Good night. <laughs>